articulate description, but Hosea is told by God to marry a woman who is prostituting herself, and God gives him instruction on how to make decisions for his marriage and, and his wife based on a prophetic way of experience of explaining his relationship with Israel. So I was reading Hosea too and really having to, you know, really think about how God has been there in my life and, you know, really assessing things like, am I a faithful bride? Do I really love God? Have I been unfaithful in some way? And it was so convicting to me. So when Kayla and I talked about this, I thought, okay, let me just focus on Hosea too, because I felt like it was, it's still so real to me from my own experience with God and, and now continuing to just kind of take inventory on my relationship with him. So I hope you gain something from this. I don't know how many of you, how many of you are married? I'm not married. I should put my hand up. <laughs> how many of you are not married? <laughs> not married. Okay. I Singleness has been a huge part of my life and I've had to, you know, be appreciative of what it means to be um, the bride of Christ while I pray for a healthy, happy um, relationship that serves God. So I'm just going to start by talking about just some of the verses um, in Hosea chapter 2 and then some of the things that I've prayed for over the years and, and ways that God has convicted me in my heart through all of this. So in Hosea, um, the first verses, verses 1 to 5, uh, there's a lot of uh, God showing the unfaithfulness of Israel towards him. He says in Hosea, God, com- sorry, God compares the adultery of Israel and his love for Israel despite their sinfulness. There was oppression of the poor, they worshipped idols, and they gave glory to, to idols instead of God. And Hosea 2.1 says, But now I bring charges against you, Israel, your mother, for she is no longer my wife. I am no longer her husband. Tell her to remove the prostitute's makeup from her face and the clothing that exposes her breasts. And I just feel so heartbroken when I hear that because I would never want God to say, I'm no longer your husband. I would never want to go through that. There were times that I, I did turn my back on God accidentally and I didn't realize what I was doing, but God had to discipline me. He had to show me what it was that I pulled my heart away from him and what it means for him to bring my heart back to him. And he was so gracious before I, I went through a desert season myself. And before I went through that season, God was faithful to give me visions to know what, I, what was going to happen. And I had these visions over a period of about four to six months. I had these visions of being in a place that was completely desolate. And gradually, God gave me more visions of what was going to happen to me in that desolate place. He gave me this vision that even though it was barren, it was empty, it looked scary, He was going to refill me. He was going to be the one to do an inner work because there was nothing in this barren place that I could rely on. There were no people. There was nothing that looked like a building or a house or a feast or a buffet, nothing. And God showed me through the vision that while I was in this desolate place, there would be an inner work inside of me. Something was going to happen. He was going to nourish me from the inside out. He was going to create someone from the inside out. And um, as I, I have a note here and I don't want to forget it. It says prostitution is exchanging something for less than what it's worth. I know a lot of times we, we ex- experience the idea of prostitution through ex- people exchanging money for sex. And that's sometimes how the world looks at prostitution. But, you know, sometimes prostitution is just, expl- just exchanging what is God will for, God's will for you for something less. If God has a perfect plan, he has a way that he sees you, he loves you, he cares about you. God holds you to us, you know, with a certain amount of value and love for you. And when we exchange that for less than, than what God says we are, we're in a place of prostitution. So the next verses um, that I looked at were verses 6 to 13. And in God's response to Israel's unfaithfulness, he withdraws his protection and blessings, and they reap the consequences of their infidelity. 
Hosea's two seven says, when she runs after lovers, she won't be able to catch them. She will search for them, but not find them. Then she will think, I may as well return to my husband, for I was better off with him than I am now. And isn't that so true? Like what it means to run after lovers, run after idols, go after things that are not meant for us. Those things will deplete us. It will take away our true identity because those things are not designed to feed us. Nothing outside of God's will for you is going to gird up your identity. It's, gonna, it's, it's never going to make you more like Jesus. It's never going to sanctify you. And that is God's will, that within his will, we find sanctification, we find strength for the battle, we find grace for the things that we need to do. So, and, and this was another thing I'm like, Lord, help me. Is there a place where I'm running after lovers? Is there, a, is there something I'm holding on to, something that I'm trying to get? Because that is not your will. Your Holy Spirit will lead me to the things you have for me. And Hosea 2, 9 to 10 says, um, But now I will take back the ripened grain and the new wine I generously provided each harvest season. I will take away the wool and the linen, linen clothing I gave her to cover her nakedness. I will strip her naked in public. All while all her lovers look on, no one will be able to rescue her from my hands. And this really helped me to understand God has a side of him that we don't appreciate how much he wants us, how much he loves us. I don't know all of the words to describe his emotions in these verses 9 to 10. But it sounds like he's saying he's jealous for her. He, I want you, Israel. I want you, woman of God. I want you holy and fully. I don't want to share you. I don't want to share you with the world. I don't want to share you with your idols. But he was faithful and now he's withdrawing and he has to discipline us sometimes. In this verse, it says that he was withdrawing the grain, the new wine. Otherwise, what would happen if God didn't discipline us and left us on the path of pursuing idols? And in verses 14 to 23, there's restoration and renewal. He's so gracious. God loves Israel. He leads Israel into the wilderness, gives Israel a chance to repent and renew her love for him. This allows Israel to come back into a future with him. We see God's love restore covenant and bring forgiveness. He brings his unfailing love and mercy back to Israel. Verse 14 to 15 says, I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. Isn't that so loving? Isn't that so kind? I will return her vineyards to her and transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. She will give herself to me as she did long ago when she was young, when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt. So God sets the stage to bring her heart back, woo her heart back, give her a new sense of love. Israel has a chance to repent. And in different ways, in different times in life, we may not go through the same type of desert season over and over again, but maybe in different little ways in our lives, we have a desert season in a certain area that that desert season, we need to see something come alive again. We need to resubmit it to God. We need to take care of the idols in that specific area, whether it's money or, or finance, sorry, health or whatever it is. Some questions that I've asked myself is, you know, what does it mean to be a faithful bride? What was God revealing to me? What did he want me to know? What was inside of me that I didn't realize was there? And I had to ask some questions. And I pursue these questions um, as often as I feel led to just take inventory and know how I should be praying, know how I should be um, proactive in my faith instead of reactive. I don't want to be caught off guard. Sometimes we're caught off guard and that happens. That happens while we're growing. One of the things I ask myself is, how should my heart and mind become more like Jesus? How can I love his commands more? How can I invite him to take up residence in me? 
Is there something in my heart and mind that's taking up a space that Jesus should occupy? Am I exchanging myself for, for less than what God has for me? Am I appreciating his holiness? Do I really have his heart for other people? Do I prioritize his commands with everything I have? Or do I only prioritize the things that are easy or the things that are fun or the things that work well for my schedule or for someone else's schedule? Do I really understand the demonic? Because one of the reasons I ended up in the desert and I ended up with idols is that I didn't understand some of the things that came into my life through relationships. I didn't understand some of the things that came into my life through um, a religious spirit. I had to take inventory on some of these things. Do I really fight for the promises God has for me? Because sometimes our promises will require us to learn how to fight for it spiritually. Because if we don't know how to fight for it spiritually, how are we going to maintain it? How are we going to have it? How are we going to develop it, grow it, expand it for God's glory? Um, But to take care of all of these things, I had to take care of what it means to be a pure bride. Truly looking to him in devotion, truly laying myself down and discovering what that means through repentance, through desiring his word, through worship, through my heart for other people. Did I really love his will for other people or did I get jealous? Did I really seek to promote someone else in what they're doing or was I holding back and thinking that's not important? Sometimes in our seasons, we have to be excited about the ways that God is working in all kinds of things for other people, in different opportunities. You see all kinds of things coming and going, but it's just maintaining that devotion to him. So God has helped me to come out of my desert season, seeing my flaws, but also seeing his goodness, seeing my idols, but also seeing his restoration, his redemption, what it means to go through the prayers, the praying, the demonic things that come after you, and to develop that strategy, to know that you have a strategy for the things that will come. And I just have a few notes on what a faithful um, bride should be. A faithful wife trusts the leadership of her husband. She is set apart for him, consecrated for this purpose, for his purpose. She's dedicated because she learns how much he loves her. She allows him to have authority and leadership and sees that his ways are pure, faithful, gracious, that he is just, he's holy. She feels surrender to him. She trusts that he will provide, protect, and promote at the right time. This is our first love. He provides with with truth, direction. He wants her to have a contrite heart. She's truly desirous of his will. She steps up and takes risks to do what is right, to follow his commands and to see him and his plans prevail. She delights in him. She delights in carrying out the commands, the ones that feel uncomfortable, the ones that we know that are really important. She lives from a place of being chosen. She adores and delights in him. One of the things that has really been a big part of my faith also is just really being repentant, coming before God, not because I have a religious spirit and I'm going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. But it's from a place of really acknowledging God is just and he's holy and he has standards that are beyond me. And I don't know what all of those standards are and I don't want to take it for granted. So having a repentant heart Um, It's just so important. And after going through my desert season and seeing all of these ugly things that I was capable of as a human being, that I was capable of um, being too attached to what people thought instead of being more attached to what Jesus thinks of me or being too worried about giving, um, giving financially or how much should I give or where should I give having that like all of these things that God showed me through the desert season all of these things have this grace and ease about it now it's so different Um, but all of that has come a lot of answers have come from just pursuing 
uh, the process, worship, being in the word, understanding the schemes of Satan, putting myself down over and over again before him and going, okay, what now? So all of these things are really just, just our way of acknowledging his love. It's not from, it shouldn't be from a place of religiousness, but really and truly in response to a loving God and a loving husband. Thank you, ladies.